The evidence of Ancelary's creativity is best captured in this mural along the street adjacent to the Catholic Church. Later in this program, we will chat with a musician, carpenter and joiner who lost equipment in the recent floods and is using music as therapy. But now let us continue our chat with Vivian Robinson, a sports administrator who also happens to be the deputy chairman of the Ancelary Constituency Council. I asked about the experience of being a first-time councillor. And coming in there, you know, I'm coming in there with, with the vitality, ready to, you know, youth and, you know, a number of ideas to implement here, you know, to better this, this community. But when you get in there, it seems to be like, you know, like your hands are tied because we are actually on the, under the government where, you know, the government actually um, filter down funds to us so that we could at least implement implement projects. Over the past year or so, just under a year, we haven't been getting our month, our quarterly allocations. I believe we are supposed to receive about maybe 25, in that area, the 25,000 every quarter to at least small projects, maybe to fix a drain, fix a, you know, maybe do something on the playing field, you know, little, little, little stuff. But those ones haven't been forthcoming and our hands are basically tied and villagers just probably felt that, you know, it is, it is a matter where we just don't have the, the foresight to make things happen here. But little, um, we try to explain that to some of them and some persons actually take it to the media, take it to the media, they take it to elsewhere, they write petitions, they take it to wherever, you know, saying that we are... We are, we, they want us out because we're not actually doing anything for the community. But this is not, a, this is not really the, the case. This is actually where we are now. We just cannot do anything at present. We, we, we are a bunch of persons who really want to work for Ancillary, for the betterment of Ancillary. But at present it's a no-no, we can't really do anything. We're just waiting until, until government provides us with, some, with, with the funds to, to do to do projects, to take on undertake projects in the community. What are some of the projects that you think that should get urgent priority attention? If you have to list the top three or five things that have to get some attention in ancillary. No, being being a sportsman, really, from 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 youth coming up, you know, I've this field is at its best, you know, compared to years, let's say about 10, 15 years ago. This is the best surface we have gotten. I always felt that Ansari deserve a much better playing field. Many of the, our footballers, our cricketers would take their time off and come, come in and dig up stones, you know, to take, take it up. We have some unwanted grass in this area. We try to do something off and on and, you know, somehow we never get the actual help from government. The other issue I have is we have a drain around the playing field, which has been there for years upon years. And I don't know, I don't know what is the problem you know, getting this sorted out. I know we've, we've had a problem with flooding. We've had a problem with flooding in, in, in the area. And I'm not sure if they are le leaving it open, you know, for the flow of, flow of waters. But actually, it really doesn't work. I mean, the persons here, we, we could see for ourselves what, what the problem is. And this open drain there has attracted persons to, to be thrown in um, garbage and feces and all what all household items in there and you know making it messy messy for even and now councillors our the village council workers have to go in there and dig it and mess it up and, and it hurts me you mean to see to see this place every time I walk through this place I mean the stench it carries it's very very not good for I mean for the health of persons here in the community so really this is one of that that's that would be Number one in my in my opinion, I mean, if we get this fixed, a number of villagers will be happy. The villagers will be very happy because the stench, I mean, visitors would come here and that's the first thing they have been invited, the stench. It's just not good. And But I've heard that, you know, they're looking to do something here about this drain and I believe, I, I, I'm not too sure, well, because villagers are now saying, well, unless it happens, that's the time they will actually believe that it actually happened because yes, We've been, they've been complaining about this thing. And now we move from the ancillary playing field to a location at Abakoko, where we meet with a man who is attempting to repair some equipment damaged by the December floods. Joseph Philip is a carpenter joiner who lost some pricey equipment in the floods, along with a workbench and other tools. 
He is also a musician who plays with the West Coast Band and a former cricketer. He was an opening batsman for St. Lucia and probably still holds the record for an opening stand. Now, let's start with cricket. Tell, tell us about cricket. When did you play cricket and, and how far did you get with cricket? Um, well, I represent St. Lucia in 1976, 76, 77. Yeah. As a batsman bowler? As a batsman. Yeah. yeah. And you said you tell me that you were an opening batsman and you um, equal a local record as well? Yes. My um Jabatis and myself. Yeah. Do you remember what that record was? 128 opening partnership. That was against which country? Against um St. Vincent. You're also a musician, I saw you playing a guitar as well. Yeah. Um you, do you play for a band right now? Yes, I play for a band. I for a band. What's the name of the band? It's, uh West Coast Band. Well we are on for about twelve to fifteen years. And that one was great by me. And I train or instruct music, steel band music, string music, happy in children. As you mentioned, steel band, you're talking about the Merry Boys. Tell us yes. about the Merry Boys. Well, they were good young fellas, good young people. They were working with me in the shop and still playing steel band with me. So, Ancelori had a steel band? Yeah, very respectable young man. Now, we here at your workshop and you obviously close to the river as we mentioned earlier. Very much so you were affected. Can you tell us how you were affected by the trough? Well, how I affected is all my material gone. Most of all my tools gone. So That's a very costly thing for you because these tools are expensive. Very good. Very big expensive. Can you give us an idea of what some of the tools are that you lost? Um, a table saw, a, a chop saw, which they call a radium saw, uh, a thickness planer about 10 inches, 10 by 10 thickness. You were telling me that one of your tables, one of your workbenches actually was taken away by the river? Yeah, not one, three of them. Hmm. And I had a bench with some on it, the, the water take it, but I still find some of them mm -hmm. because the water didn't reach the top. So the tools that you had inside the workshop were also affected by the water? Yeah, all of them affected. So how does how does that affect you now, personally? Because you have your well, tools gone, your materials gone. Well, I'm very affected because I'm not doing nothing right now, and I had three fellas with me. They're out of business, so that is a problem. Yeah, three guys working with you, and they can't do any work right now. No, three trainees are with me, and a man working with me, and myself. There were five of us in there. So since the trophy, you haven't done any work at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And not received nothing from nobody up to this time. So, what do you plan to do next? Well, to build back again, because that's what I can do. I don't want to be just sitting down by the street. I still have strength, so I feel like I have to work still. That's what I can do. So, I saw you um, doing some repairs. So, you're trying to repair some of the equipment that you have left? Yeah, it's this morning somebody brought that for me. So, I just start already, but the tools are not there yet. I have to get my tools. That's the problem. All right, well, uh, good luck. We hope um, eventually things work out for you. Of course, yes. Thank you very much. Today, we recognize the contribution of Joseph Philip as a musician. He was also instrumental in the Merry Boys Steel Band in Ancillary, has been an instructor in carpentry and joinery, and has represented Ancillary and St. Lucia in cricket. And as you heard earlier, probably still the holder of a record for an opening stand. He's a member of the West Coast Band, which performs at Marigou Bay on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you get a chance, do check them out. On that note, we conclude our first installment on Ancillary. In our next program, we visit a bit of a history of the community, meet a national football player, and we engage the real inspirational members of the Youth on Fire ministry. I am Bernard Fannis. Join us again for Calabash Community. <laughs>